Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. And if this is our first time meeting, nice to meet you. My name is Jay. Welcome to my listening room. Now, today I have something very, very special, and that is my experience in Korea. You see, I visited Korea in a decade time, so it's been a decade since I visited my homeland, and I was finally exposed to the Korean hi-fi scene, stuff I haven't experienced before. And one of them, and probably the most uh, exciting and the highlight of the show, which actually made the entire trip worth it, was the Brunoko Music Bar. I did an entire coverage, so you can watch it in the link description below. But if one thing stands out from that coverage, it should be that I cried. And I'm not just saying that, like, you know, I cried, but I cried. Yes, you <laughs> cried like a baby. Literally cried because of the emotional connection I had with the music in a place, in a setting that really wasn't suited, you know, for that kind of thing. I just visited, it was a bar, you know, First time meeting the guy, sat down, listened to the music, and I started dripping tears, which is quite unusual. He probably thought I was a weirdo. But he had big RCA speakers, and he had built an amplifier specifically to go with the RCA speakers. And I was really intrigued by the story he had. You know, he tried multiple different amplifiers from name brands all over the world. You know, he said 30 or 40 different amplifiers and he just couldn't find a tube amplifier that was to his taste, that what he, what, he, what he was looking for, that exceptional experience with the RCA speakers. So instead, he rolled back to the olden days of the RCA circuitry and based on the old RCA tube circuitry design, he had designed his own set of amplifiers so that he can drive his RCA speakers to absolute bliss and nirvana in his music bar. Again, remember this music bar wasn't designed for it to be a bar. First of all, it was designed because it was the only space he could put the RCA speakers in and listen to them. And he thought, well, might as well let other people hear this great system as well, which I truly appreciate that he actually took that route. So long story short, I really loved the RCA sound, loved it so much to a point where I was actually actively looking to rebuild the RCA speakers. I was inquiring to some speaker builders, you know, the cabinet builders and so on. Now I started to kind of grasp all this, but you know, it was a hopeful thinking because at the end of the day, me collecting all these parts and trying to build the RCA system like he did, it's not possible in my space. You know, I would have to rent out a garage or, you know, something else, a bigger syst a bigger space for those speakers to even remotely fit. I mean, those are gigantic speakers. So it just wasn't probable, but I still wanted that RCA experience once again. I wanted to have that emotional connection I had back in the music bar because that was an amazing experience and definitely a bookmark in my audiophile journey. And a few weeks passed since I came back from Korea and Bruno, he said, hey, do you wanna take the Brunoco amplifier for a ride? And I said, yeah, sure, you know, why not? So he sent me the prototype, the one that he was using at the bar. So I put it in my system and immediately I was, I was hooked. I was hooked instantly because I was actually getting that RC sound that Bruno was talking about and that I experienced. And I kind of scratched my memory and started watching my own video, my own coverage, which I never do. I started watching my own video and one part stood out to me where he said the amplifiers that he built are built with the same blood as the RCA speakers. This 6L6 20 watts per channel Terra integrated amplifier was especially made for my RCA photophone system. It is greatly matched with the RCA photophone system because it shares the emotional content that the photophone system has. It has the same blood, I think. So essentially, in direct translation, it has contains the same type of sound signature as the RCA. And that's something really hard to do, you know, speaker sound signature, amplifier sound signature, and to match that perfectly. But I think he really did it because the moment I hooked it up, I mean, I was like, RCAs, oh my God. And instantly I had that emotional connection with the music that I had back, you know, in the music bar, not into full glory, because, you know, I'm still missing the RCA speakers, but to some degree. And it was an absolutely amazing experience. 
to where I begged Bruno to start selling this internationally so that people can experience this integrated amplifier more. And after begging and begging and begging, he finally agreed and has come up with the final production model. Then he sent me this, this is the final production model, which I hooked up and immediately noticed that this was immensely, immensely more put together and sounded even heaps amounts better than the prototype that I was using at the time. You know, there's something weird about Koreans and I'm Korean, but I still don't understand it. You know, when I went to Korea, people were like, no, oh, we can't have you over. You know, our listening room is so dirty. It's not presentable. But then when I went there, I'm like, this is the cleanest listening room I have ever seen. What are you talking about, right? I live, I live like a pig down here. What are you talking about, you know? And that's kind of the case here. You know, Bruno, he told me, yeah, the final production, you know, has a little bit of better parts, you know, better, you know, wiring, a little bit more put together, you know, auto biasing and all that so that, you know, the end, end user when it's sold, right, as a consumer product is more satisfied and easier to use, yada, yada, da. So I thought, okay, so it's basically just, you know, little things that he changed. The moment I hooked it up, I was like, bro, what are you talking about? Like the sound just became way better on the final production. Just, just way better. He was like, yeah, the final production is just a slightly better. What are you talking about slightly better? This is, this is a different level. And that honestly says a lot because the original prototype Bruno Co amplifier that I had going was nothing short of greatness. Um, and this is like a different level of different tier of musicality. And we'll talk about the sound quality here in a minute but the build quality itself just absolutely built like a tank. Full aluminum chassis, as you can see here, built like an absolute tank. I'm convinced that if I drop this on the floor, not that I would, it would just go through my floor. Like the amplifier would have like no scratches on it. And the overall aesthetic, I absolutely dig it. It's kind of following the old Western electric, you know, RCA type of design, but a little bit more put together, right? So it's minimalistic, but it's built like a tank. I mean just looking and touching the unit, you, you're like, holy crap, you can kill someone with this thing. Not that you should, this is, you know, an audio device, remember? But again, the volume knobs, everything is top notch quality. It's a very simple circuitry, right? It doesn't have a lot of functions, right? It just has four inputs in the back and that's it. And the reason being is that this is a very pure approach, meaning from input to output, the less is more. And that's the approach he's taking. He wants pure, he wants the speakers that you're using to shine. So again, this is a very pure, purest design, meaning that there's less components in here to make the circuitry as short as possible, as simple as possible for that purity factor. And you definitely hear that purity factor, by the way, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But essentially, this is a very pure circuit design with very minimal parts, but every part is made in Korea, including the capacitors, the you know parts inside, everything is made in Korea with the top notch parts available only in Korea. However, the transformer is the heart of any tube amplifier. And this is where Brunoco amplifiers really, really takes a high mark. The transformers in this is artisan made, it's again, made in Korea, and they make this in absolute glory. This is a high quality transformers, guys. Like unbelievably high quality. And so he specifically made these transformers to go with his amplifiers for his RCAs. And that's where the majority of the money goes towards the transformers. Again, the tubes are very simple. Four 6L6 tubes and four 12AU7s, which opens up to variety of tube rolling fun, right? You can change tubes on it but it comes with JJ tubes, which honestly isn't bad whatsoever, especially the sound you get right off the bat, which if you want tube rolling, I'm planning to try multiple different tubes with this integrated amplifier, because this is a keeper and we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna be definitely keeping this one, um, but I'm telling you, we're going to be trying different tubes. If you want updates on which tube is the best that I have tried with the Brunoco, you better subscribe because that video is surely coming 
The final production model here also has a auto biasing system so that you can just plug in the tubes without any adjustment in the bias and stuff like that. So very simple to use and works wonderfully. The only thing that I do have a complaint about is that you don't get a remote with this model. But I have suggested and recommended to Bruno that he would make a remote out of the same you know, material as the chassis, aluminum chassis, and you can hold it in your hand and feel the quality as you turn up and down the volume. I think that would be wonderful. And hopefully he'll get to that, but more on that in the future. Now Bruno wanted to make everything simple without shipping costs, you know, like this and that. So all inclusive, including shipping fees is 3,400 US dollars internationally. And let me tell you that that is an incredible, incredible deal. That's an absolute steal in my opinion, as this is the best. And I'm not just saying that, literally the best. I have compared and listened to so many tube integrated amplifiers, but in this price range under $5,000, I am really hard pressed to find anything more musical than the Bruno Co so far. Of course, that may change in the future, but out of you know a lot of tube amplifiers, including vintage to modern integrated amplifiers or solo amplifiers for that matter, that I have tried, I am telling you, this this one's this this one's hard to beat. This one is truly special. This one is the most musical tube unit I have ever listened to. In fact, I have a lot of you know, high-end stuff here. I used to have the Luxman M900U, I have the NAT monoblocks, I have the AGD monoblocks, and you know, I have had multi-thousand dollar components in here, and I'm not saying that to brag. The point I'm trying to make here is, despite me having all these you know, high-end stuff, when it comes for real musical enjoyment, when I'm not reviewing, when I'm my, my off time, when I'm just sitting back and listening to music just for my pure enjoyment and not assessing, this is what I reach out for. This is what I grab and put in my system. And that is something to be said. But let me put it straight. In terms of technicality, in terms of like imaging and little, you know, stuff like that, audiophile things, this is not the best, right? This is not the best. It does not compete with $10,000, $20,000 integrated amplifiers or amplifiers. I'm not saying that, right? It does not compete with my NAT in terms of imaging capability or all the little details and you know this and that. But overall musicality, the overall sound profile, the overall, you know, the, the emotional value this has is something that is kind of hard to put a value on it. Because when I put the Terra, the Bruno Terra integrated amplifier into my system, things become more dynamic, things become airy, things become spacious to a degree where I am just in music, I am flowing in music. And that is an experience that really, you can't put a price on it. When I listen to the Bruno Terra, I don't necessarily nitpick little things. I have no time to because I'm just lost in music, just going after next track, next track, after this track, you know, I'm gonna try this track. It's just the musical enjoyment that just go on for hours. I lose track of time lis listening to this integrated amplifier. And I never lose track of time unless it's absolutely stunning in terms of sound. In fact, when I listened to the RCA system in Korea, the system that made me cry, I wasn't nitpicking little things. You know, it was the overall musicality of that system that made that happen, that emotional connection happen. I wasn't nitpicking, there was no chance to because of the amount of emotional connection I got instantly. It wasn't me sitting down and playing the right tracks to get that emotional connection. No, this was different. I play every track, track after track. It just and boom, 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 emotional connection. I'm just engaged. I just totally forget about the Brunico amplifier or whatever the hell I'm listening to, speakers, whatever it is. I'm just lost in music and it's just me and music, just absolute emotional engagement. And that is something really hard to have. And that is what the Brunico provides for me. And that's why I reach for it every chance I get. But of course, my job is to describe the sound. So I'll do my best to describe the emotional sound that I get of this integrated amplifier. Now, starting with the bass. The bass is probably one of the most tight, not most, like literally the tightest bass I've heard in a tube amplifier bar none. It rivals my NAT monoblocks. And those NAT monoblocks, let me tell you, whew, 
base control is out the wazoo, right? It is very linear, it extends, it's able to control the base very, very well. The Brunico does that in spades as well. I mean, when I listen to the Brunico, it doesn't, in terms of the bass, I'm like, whoa, this is not a tube amplifier, you know? It even rivals some of the best solid states I've heard that controls bass phenomenally. You know, that gripping of the bass, that control of the bass is just absolutely fabulous on the Brunico. The Wilsonton R8 that I reviewed, which was a budget integrated amplifier that punched way above its weight, had great bass and dynamics and punch. The Brunico has all of that, but in spades, not just in punch and dynamics, but also texture and nuance and the linear extension. When you hook up to a speaker that is able to extend low, like, you know, the CSS Typhons, or let's say, you know, Bocard S400 Mark II, you know, those speakers that can extend down very low to really low levels, yeah, this amplifier can take that no problem. It's able to drive it phenomenally with finesse, control, and just dynamics for days. For example, when I played this track, like Yellow, for example, right? You guys know this track if you've been watching my channel. Love this track, and that do 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 you know, it's very, very clear, crisp, but at the same time, it's able to have those textures. It's not just do do, you know, you hear the do do, you know, like it's very, very textured to where you can hear all those nuances and it's so enjoyable. Those micro dynamics and macro dynamics is impressive on this integrated amplifier. It probably does micro and macro dynamics better than almost like 90% of the amplifiers I have tried, including solid state and tube amplifier. And certainly none of them below 5,000 you know, US dollars. In terms of deep bass, I played this track right here by James Blake. And again, a very familiar track to those that have been watching my channel. It has two distinctive bass notes. Again, if you put it onto a speaker that has no bass, no extension, then you will hear just one note, you know, or and kind of the second note will kind of uh, flabber, like, right? Instead of actually creating a round bass that you can feel and hear. And even if the speakers can recreate those bass, if you pair it up with amplifier that is flimsy, that cannot drive down that low, then you do get that, you know, kind of clipping effect very quickly with the increase of the volume. You get none of that here with the Brunico. The Brunico phenomenally recreates both, you know, bass notes absolutely phenomenally with texture, roundness, punch and dynamics and finesse. It is incredible. So there's no complaints with the bass in terms of both extension and punch and rhythm, micro and macro dynamics, which is just, absolutely everything I've looked for in a good bass in an amplifier. So there you have it. In terms of the mid-range, the mid-range is the highlight of the show as with most tube you know, amplifiers, but the mid-range is just absolutely magic. It's hard to describe the emotional connections I get with it. And it's not overly warm, it's slightly warm, but it's very clear and transparent and pure sounding. And that's the best word I can describe this mid-range of this integrated amplifier. It's just pure sounding. It makes every speaker that I have paired up with just more pure sounding, more transparent in the mid-ranges. Um, the vocals are sweeter, again, textured. Uh, mid-range is textured and detailed at the same time, but not fatiguing, um, especially after burning, you know, tubes burn in a little bit so that the high frequency is a little bit less edgy. In the beginning, it may be a little bit edgy, but once you burn it in and time goes by, I found that the edges kind of smoothen out and it's a more smooth flowing experience in the mid range. Just absolutely glorious. For example, when I play this track right here by Birdie, a beautiful track, a beautiful, I mean, this track is absolutely stunning. Love this track and the vocals, just incredible. You know, holographic sweet, you know, just incredible amount of pureness coming through the voices. And, you know, that's one of the strengths of this integrated amplifier is that purity factor with voices and instruments, it just comes to life. It comes to life. It's not boring, it is exciting, and it's realistic to me. You know, it brings air around the instruments. It builds a holographic sound stage that's hard to grasp. Every time I hook up this integrated amplifier compared to other units that I might have here, tube or not tube, the sound stage just expands. The depth is imp impressive, but more than the depth, what's impressive about this one is that the sound stage width just drastically becomes from a playing field, like a park, 
to a field in Canada. And if you've seen a field in Canada, there's no end. And that's kind of the thing. You don't really feel an end to the sound stage. It's not crisp in the edges so that you feel exactly where the sound stage ends. Instead, it's a forever and forever and forever expanding sound stage that you can't really grasp where the end of the sound stage is, but you do know that it's huge because the moment you hook up another amplifier, the sound stage goes whoop, and then you hook this back up, whoop, and you can definitely tell that in a track like this. Again, you can use a lot of live tracks to test sound staging and stuff like that as well, but I like to test with some tracks that has nice sound stage to begin with. That's not really a live track, and this is one of those you know, instances. A beautiful rhythm, beautiful sound. I love this track very, very much. Definitely try it in your system. Uh, with the Bruno Cole, you can definitely tell the sound stage just expands and it's a forever ending you know, sound stage. It is a beautiful, 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 beautiful combination with this track. And I've played this track with a lot of the speakers that I have tried with the Brunoco, and every single one of them had thrown a much more bigger soundstage than I have imagined uh, or realized before with that specific speaker. So definitely the Brunoco is the one that is contributing to that large soundstage. The layering on the soundstage of the Brunoco is very good. So meaning you hear things further away from you, but also close to you, and you can hear that distinctiveness very easily. However, again, the imaging isn't the best in terms of picking out all the side instruments and this and that, because again, this is a very vague soundstage. You get a large stretched soundstage, so uh, while everything is coming from even behind you, you know, around you, beside you, and all that kind of stuff, you know, funky stuff going on where you feel like you're in the music, you know, in the middle of the performance, uh, you don't necessarily be able to pick out all these little things like you would in an analytical system or a system that's very good at those, you know, technicalities. So you don't get that kind of technicality here, but the overall musicality just kind of makes you feel lost in the music to where you really don't think about those imaging capabilities and it's not something that's bothered me. But I definitely thought I would mention it in case you do want imaging to where you know exactly where the instruments are every single time, everywhere, every track, and that's definitely not the Bruno Co. The Bruno Co has microdynamics. You hear all those things and again, the imaging isn't bad. I'm comparing it to literally, you know, above $5,000 integrated amplifiers out there, or even the $20,000, $30,000 NAT monoblocks that I have. So again, the reference point is pretty high here. So again, I'm comparing it to those. Imaging isn't bad at all. Again, imaging is right on there with the price point. I wouldn't say punches above or below the price point on this one, and most people will be very satisfied at this price point with this type of imaging with this amplifier. Again. Um, the rest is exceptional and definitely punches above its price point, including the treble. The treble on this is quite interesting. It's smooth but airy and it's the, one of the most airiest presentations I have seen. I mean, it is spacious for days and the high frequency is just open. Like, there's no, there's no cap. You know, there's no stopping it. It's just open, like, so transparent, so dynamic, so crisp. Everything is very, very well layered, very spacious, and exciting. You know, this is not a rolled off, overly warm sounding integrated amplifier. It has warmth and body and flesh to the mid-range, but again, at the same time, it's very pure sounding like the design suggests. So remember how I reviewed the Totem loudspeakers and I mentioned how the drivers don't have a crossover and therefore they're very pure sounding. It's kind of like that. If I had to pick a speaker that would kind of match with the sound profile of the Brunoco, you know, the closest I would get to is probably the totem sound and that pure factor only, only that pure factor, right? That purity that comes through is amazing. You know, you don't notice this when you're playing with other amplifiers, you know, you don't think that, oh, you know, this amplifier is not transparent enough. But then when you hook up the Brunoco, you simply immediately realize that it's layers of, you know, tinting has been lifted off. It's just pure transparency and it's just so clear and crisp and satisfying. But again, with that smoothness and refinement and body and flesh to the mid-range, 
so that it's not lean or aggressive or shouty or edgy sounding. It's just a really nice balance and overall that kind of musicality all put together I suppose is what really makes that musical enjoyment for me in my listening room. But again, this is just simply me trying to put it into words. The RCA sound profile is something that is kind of hard to explain in terms of the musicality, you know, kind of connection. You know, when I was over at Bruno's music bar and did that interview, uh, he left one key part out and he behind the scenes told me this later. So essentially we had a talk and I was like, hey, you know, I don't know what about the RCA speakers, you know, Curious J. I was like, I don't know what about the RCA speaker is making this emotional connection with me, but I can't grasp it. You know, with all the experience I've had with reviewing gear, I just can't grasp exactly what is about the sound profile that is making this musical enjoyment so rich and so, so engaging to where I literally cried in a stranger's music bar. You know, like, what, what is it? What do, you, what do you think it is? And Bruno explained to me, well, I don't think it's just a speaker, Jay, right? Because you have to realize this speaker has literally been, been in theaters, right? RCA's uh, were theater speakers. So they have literally given enjoyment to thousands and thousands of people in those theaters, to families, to couples, to all those people with tears, cries, you know, laughter, and all these emotions put together is a speaker that has given thousands and thousands of people enjoyment and laughter and all that stuff. And I can't discount that, you know? Sometimes a product is a product, but sometimes a creation that has given people enjoyment over time, that has a history, turns into something else. And of course, this is a little bit kind of artistic approach, right? Definitely not objective in any way, but I appreciated that because again, it's hard to pinpoint what it is about this RCA sound that is so emotionally engaging to me. You know, when I listened to the RCA speakers, it wasn't like I was emotionally engaged to the music, you know? I had no emotional value to the music I was listening to. It was a Chinese music, I didn't even know the lyrics, and you know, it's a track I used to know, right? I've heard it many times, but it's nothing that would make me cry. The moment that I played that track out of that system, I guess the only way I can kind of put this into word is, in that moment, it felt like the RCA speakers really understood me. Um, it felt like it understood me more than anything else in the world. And that was an incredible warm feeling I got and it made me tear up. And the sound, again, you know, this is, it was beautiful. The, the vocal, it was just breathtaking. And that kind of emotional connection with the music is something that truly makes you vulnerable, but also at the same time, something that really connects you to your inter inner self in that emotional way. And that's, again, a little bit, again, cringy, but that's the truth. That's what I'm telling you. You know, it's, it's a little bit different than my usual reviews of talking mid-range, bass, and treble, and how this performs versus other things, because I can go on and on about how great the treble is, how good the mid-range is, how good the bass and the sound stage is, but the Bruno Co is more than that. The RC sound is something immaculate. It's something that brings me emotional value in spades that I just can't put it into words and just pick out one word, you know, contrast, this and that. There's no words to describe that emotional connection that I get with the Brunoco amplifier. And it's definitely not exactly 100% same as the RCA emotional connection I got at the Brunoco music bar. Because again, I don't have the RCA speakers, nor do I have the space for it. But this is very close to that, in my opinion. I mean, this brings you a little bit of that taste into your speaker space. Now, snap back to reality. Um, enough about the emotions. Let's talk about the wattage. So this has 20 watts of power. Now that may not seem like a lot, but I'm telling you, this even pairs up very, very well. And I've tried literally so many speakers that have come in here over the time, you know, I had this integrated amplifier and I've tried all of them. And every single one of them 
was for my musical enjoyment. You know, on my off time, I would switch in and out, you know, different speakers and all that kind of stuff. And I've tried it with a lot of speakers, sensitive to not very sensitive speakers. And this can drive literally all of them. I think the only time is that if you have a very large room and very insensitive speakers, inefficient speakers, then you know, and you're cranking up very, very loud, then maybe the Brunico will start clipping. But I mean, I highly doubt it because, you know, the Kef LS50 Meta, I've never paired that speaker up satisfyingly with a tube amplifier before. The Brunico um, has that finesse in the bass, it's able to control the, even the Kef LS50 Metas, which is a pretty, you know, hard to drive speaker, and it just drives it with finesse and it increases the sound stage, you know, it makes the speakers more musical, um, just absolutely glorious. Same thing with the Bacard S400 Mark II. Again, a speaker that I've been recommending only solid state amplifiers, uh, these two, right? Kef LS50 Metas and Bacard S400 Mark II. These are speakers that I recommend solid state amplifiers up until now. The Brunico is probably the only exception where I would say, yeah, yeah. This can drive it, this can control the bass, this can finesse those speakers, even those speakers. So I definitely recommend it. And again, the Typhons, the CSS Typhons. I mean, those are my collaboration creation with CSS, you know, and it's probably one of my favorite pairings. Like it's just so dynamic, finesse, the, the musicality, the, the fun, the rhythm, the dynamics, the micro and macro dynamics that come out. Incredible. Absolutely love that combination. It is incredible. Uh, what else? I mean, Tectons, beautiful combination, but those are sensitive speakers, so easier to drive, so it shouldn't be a problem even in a large space. Again, if your speakers are sensitive, you shouldn't have a problem with this unit even in a large space, in my opinion. This is a very deceiving, you know, amplifier. 20 watts, but it's very powerful. Very, very powerful. If you told me this was a 100 watt amplifier, I would believe it. You know, 100 watt class A, I would believe it. It's that powerful. It's very, very powerful. And I've never passed 12 o'clock on the volume knob here even when I'm at cranking levels. I dare not even crank up past, you know, 11 o'clock on this in most times. It's just ear splitting kind of loud. Another example would be like the Concept 300 or the Concept 50s that I reviewed, both of them. Again, I mentioned it in those reviews as well. Matches phenomenally. Like every single time I hook it up, it's just, mm, it takes control of that bass, finesse, mid-range, magic, beautiful. So again, have no problem driving less sensitive speakers. But again, you know, if you are gonna get a tube amplifier and you're gonna crank it loud, then you might as well go with a sensitive speaker. But again, it, this will have no trouble driving it as far as my experience goes. Lastly, I will leave you with this. So I actually featured the Bruno Co on several of my you know, speaker reviews, as I have mentioned, and uh, two people bought the Brunico amplifier even before I released this review. And they messaged me and kind of gave a little bit of an impression here. And you can check those out in the link description below. I'll pin it, you know, their commentaries, and you can read on their, you know, kind of satisfaction rate as well. And I usually don't do this, but the reason is because I realized that I'm not the only one hearing that RCA magic, the RCA sound, that's hard to kind of, you know, say right? Kind of put into words. So it's nice to know that I'm not just being crazy. But again, I think this is a true gem that I have found by visiting Korea and I'm so happy I did. So that's pretty much it from me. I hope this video was helpful to you. Make sure you subscribe for future videos on audio just like this, as well as the Brunico tube rolling video that will come out soon enough. Don't forget to also click that like button if you enjoyed this video as it helps my channel out and it doesn't cost you anything. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on the next one, on my next journey.